Hi, I'm Steve Dukic, the product manager for Rockwell Automation, and I'm going to describe to you our GuardLink safety system. GuardLink, as the name implies, has two key aspects. One, guarding. Two, linking. The GuardLink safety system is an elegant solution to those at safety applications that require multiple devices wired in series to cover a machine. You need to know what the status of those devices are, but you don't want to go out to the machine to look at the LEDs on the different devices. The guarding system will take care of that solution. Now let me show you how we do that. We start with the brains of the operation. The DG relay. D for dual, two inputs, and G for guard link. The DG is a configurable safety relay. Or you can figure that with the two push buttons on our front panel. Right now, if I press it once, it tells me what the configuration is. Power LED is green because the power is on. The out X LED is green because it's telling me I'm using both input one and input two. If I was only using input one, it would be red. And I can change that, of course. Input one and two are both green because they're set for guard link. If I wanted to set it for OSSD, I would have to change that and it would be a red LED. The next indicator is out X. Well, the DG relay has two single channel, well, it's a single channel input and a single channel output. And we can configure the, that input and output to be either OSSD type or single wire safety. So I can get a single wire safety in, single wire safety out, OSSD in, OSSD out. Right now I have it configured so that the out X terminal is uh, configured for single wire safety and I have the single wire safety connected to an EM expansion module. The NX is red. It's telling me it's, I'm not using the NX terminal. Reset indicator is red. That tells me it's automatic reset. If I want to make it monitor manual, I could do that, and then that LED would be green. If I press the top button twice, I see, you see the bottom three LEDs are blinking, and it's going to blink the number of times I have set for my delay plot setting. We have delay switch, 60 positions that go from zero, immediate, 30 second delay. So this one's going to blink eight times. Eight is set for three seconds. Um, and then we'll see that the EM relay will, will turn off immediately. And three seconds later, my contact will turn off. The DG relay has two electromechanical safety outputs. And right now I've got, the wire, I've got them wired to two 100S safety contacts. Alternatively, I could have connected those outputs to the, C the safe talk off inputs of, uh, say, a PowerFlex or maybe a Kinetics. On the communication side, we have the Ethernet module. It talks to the DG over an optical link located in the back of the housing. So there's no wires between the two housings. The Ethernet module is connected to my panel view in the back. Over my panel view, I'm connected to a guard, uh, control logics. Here we only need control logics because the safety system is controlled by, a, by the DG. We don't need guard logics. We could use guard logics, but basically what we're doing is we're sending status signals from the, D, from the DG, back to the control logics, and then displaying it on the panel. And also, now if my panel view, I'll send lock and unlock signals to the control panel, control logics, which then transfers it to the DG relay, and then will lock or unlock my gates as appropriate. Now let's go look at the, the guard link part of it. Like I said, we have, we have, I have two guard link systems. My top row is guard link one, my bottom lock, row is garlic 2, and the garlic system is accomplished by, by taps. We start from uh, we start here uh, from the DG relay with a four wire, standard four wire cable, power, ground, garlic signal, flu signal, a command lock and unlink lock signal. So I have two wires on my DG relay, one going to my uh, garlic system number two, one going to garlic system number two. We have many different types of devices that we can connect to GuardLink, so we have to have the appropriate tap. We have right now six taps. We'll have an 8-pin OSSD, an 8-pin EMMS, electromechanical safety switch, a 5-pin EMMS, a 5-pin OSSD, and we've re recently launched a passive power tap and a passive tap. And we'll go through those in a little bit more detail. Now each guard link system can have up to 32 taps. At the end of the system, we must have a terminator. The terminator 
tells the tap, hey, you're the last one, you start the, the garbling signal, you send it through all the taps, and as it traverses, the question makes you, the question is whether the device is safe or not. It says that sends that signal to the DG relay. It's kind of a small system for demo purposes. You can run from tap to tap up to 30 meter cable. Cables come in various different sizes, uh, so you don't have to deal with a lot of extra cable. Uh, so you have 32 devices, 30 meters between devices, and that, that means you, you can cover up to 960 meters of a machine. Let's take you through a system. Here I have an e-stop, e-stop, I press the e-stop, you notice the delay there, that's that three second delay, let's do it again, you'll see the EM goes off immediately, two, three, three seconds later, the 100S contact will go off. On my tap, the tap has two indicators, a device indicator, so it's turned red because this device is pressed, you notice that the link indicator on all the taps is red. The device indicator is blinking green because these devices have not opened up. And like I said, we can connect many different devices. Here's a sensor guard. One, two, three. Here we have an EMMS 5 pin. And let's just say you have a, a need for, a, say, an e-stop or some, some simple apparatus in a hazardous location. Well, you can send a signal to a 937TH and send that signal into the hazardous area. So now I, I can be in my hazardous area, send a, a stop signal. Notice that although I have many, many input devices, I only have one output. So I really am only addressing one zone of a machine. So I can do that with many different inputs. Continuing on, we go to a passive power tap. Now, if you have 32 devices and you put a lot of guard locking switches on, they tend to take more more, more power, and then you can create a, a voltage drop where the voltage at the tap is too low for the, for the system. And so what we now did is um, introduce a power passive tap so that we can take a remote power supply and now power and power into the guard link system for all devices downstream. And you can add up to six power taps, which is a, a lot. Um, for the pa passive tap, I have to connect a guard link enabled device. Now here's our 440 GMZ. This is a new device for us. It automatically determines whether it should be its outputs should be OSSD or guard link. With the power passive tap, we don't have um, we have an indication of what power, but the device is uh, indicating whether it's uh, on or off. Continuing on, a sensor guard with integrated latch. Got the nice magnet on there to hold in place. Light touch. I got another 440 GMZ connected to a passive tap. So now the GMZ has realized, hey, I'm connected to a guard link. Let me, let me configure my, um, automatically configure my outputs to be guard link. Going on, I have an, uh, a light curtain. Now the nice thing about this is I can add a five pin splitter and I can power both my transmitter, well, my receiver and my transmitter uh, on the power tap, uh, on the on a on a standard tap, standard five pin OSSD tap. Now, you got to be careful about this application because you don't generally have a three second delay when you have a light curtain. But you know, this is just for demo purposes. Now let's talk about locking and unlocking. My top row I have all guard locking switches. In the second row I only have taps four and six are guard locking. But here I have a panel view and I can send those locking signals to, uh, to my devices. Um, I have it set up such that I can send out a lock, lock signal to each tap, an unlock signal. I can send a reset signal. I notice that stages of each of the outputs, uh, each of the tabs, and then I also know if the tap is faulted. Then I have, to, I have a system for guard link one and a set of buttons for guard link two. At the top I have a button two buttons when I can unlock all the switches or lock them all. So let's, let's do the unlock all. So you can hear the, the, the switches are turning off little by little by little. 
So the thing is that you, if you have a number of uh, guard locking switches and you're trying to lock or unlock them all, you're going to get a current surge. And to prevent that from happening, we add a delay from tap to tap to tap. And you can hear that tap. You can hear that delay. It's built in so you don't have to do anything. Now let's lock them all. Let's un unlock them all again. I'm going to show you something interesting. So although I sent a, a, the unlock command to all the switches, you see on guard link one, all the switches are off. On guard link two, only, only four and six are off. That's because my e stop, my sensor guards, they don't have locking switches. So although I sent the locking command, oh, they just ignored it. And so their status is on. I can send a lock signal to individual devices. So now I sent the signal, a non, a lock, uh, an unlock signal to the GMT and also to the TLS and ZR at the end there. We'll go lock them again. Nope, now they're all green. That provides a pretty good overview of, of the guard locking system. As you can see, it covers lots of different products. It's very easy to uh, add these things if you for mounting. Uh, get out of here. We have these cl uh, clips, which makes the uh, installation of the cables very easy. Hold them in nicely so you can get them in and move them around. So in summary, the guard link system is really key, really elegant solution for that series connection of safety devices to cover your machine safety system. I hope you found it useful. If you need more information, go to our website, www.rockwellautomation.com. Take care and have a safe day.